Okay, good day, everybody. We're going to go over week eight and week nine slides right now. A key in life, you got to stay hydrated, guys. Drink a lot of water. All right, we'll get into week eight. How do you measure the impact of corporate social responsibility? So how do you how do you measure how your how your corporate social responsibility? How do you know how it's doing, right? So basically, you compare yourself, you compare your business to other businesses. You can see to measure how you're doing. You can see what other companies are doing, right? You can seek recognition by taking part in responsibility awards and trying to win. So. Um, in my industry, in the construction industry, we have a lot of um, um, a lot of general contractors that that work towards uh, getting awards, right, from 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 different from different uh, um, recognition places, right. So they'll work on like who who's the most like safest. They'll get the award for the most safest or the best design or the most uh, sustainable company or the you know the one giving back like stuff like that. So. If you if you work to participate to get those awards, usually it'll help you in in, in measuring the impact of your CSR. Um, use key performance indicators uh, to measure environmental performance. So KPIs are like um, they're just targets that people set. So let's just say that um, your your targets are want to help a hundred people in the community um, find shelter, something like that. Right, so every year we help 100 people find shelter. That's your KPI. So you get to measure how well you're doing, and then the use basically is use standard acts in your community to measure the involvement of your business within the community. So usually communities have like standard acts where like you know companies are asked to do so and so and so. As long as you're meeting those uh, guidelines of your community, you should be fine. So. Stakeholders and uh, corporate social responsibility influence. While opinions differ on how responsibility should be allocated across public and private sectors, corporate stakeholders are demanding that companies recognize a broader scope of responsibility in addressing those problems. So stakeholders are basically influencing um, the companies to do better and have a better corporate social responsibility. As a result, companies are increasingly working with stakeholders to understand their views and concerns of, on various environmental, social, corporate governance, and economic issues, and to incorporate and address those views and concerns in the company's strategic decision-making process. So, so basically, what they're doing, what they're saying, is um, companies, um, CEOs, um, you know, anyone who's high-level management, they are working with the stakeholders, not just investors, but you know. The, the workers and the people who are affected by the company, right? As we talked about, stakeholders and shareholders are different. Um, so they're working with all the stakeholders in order to try and figure out how do we increase our corporate social responsibility. So the CSR report, due to the typical range of information most relevant to stakeholders' interests, can be a key component of a company's stakeholder engagement strategy. So CSR report, we'll get into that. I'll tell you what that guy is. So basically, it's used to inform stakeholders how a company has addressed or is addressing uh, concerns from stakeholders and incorporating them into the company's strategic decision-making process. So basically, the way the stakeholders work, just to sum this whole slide up, is they stakeholders work on trying to um, increase the corporate social responsibility of the company and... Um, they are demanding high, high, high expectations of their their management and the company itself to deliver on those. So, what is a what's the relation between corporate social responsibility and profitability? So, it's generally held that corporate social responsibility could increase profits, and thus most large companies are actively engaged in it. I think we spoke about this before. This may enhance a company stock price, making executive stocks. And stock options more profitable and shareholders happier. So when you have a, a, a corporate social, a high level of corporate social responsibility and people know about it, uh, and if you're a public company, what ends up happening is whoever owns the stock, the price goes up. And usually executives and uh, high level executives and even employees, they get paid based off of 
um, off like salaries, but they also get a share in the company. For example, Tesla, um, when Tesla wasn't making any money, like it wasn't profitable, what happened was Elon Musk, even though it wasn't profitable, the price of the share was just going up and up and up and up. So Elon Musk was making a lot of money. So what happened was, uh, one one of these business uh, mogul one of these business um, um, what's it called uh, reporters they were saying well, wow look at Tesla Tesla's not even making any money but Elon Musk's uh, value of his of his stocks you know his value his net worth just keeps going up he's like that's so unfair to the people who are working at Tesla who are who have to be you know have to, we have to who Elon Musk is cutting back their salaries. And Elon Musk said, you know, you're an idiot because every single person who works at Tesla also owns Tesla stocks. They get shares in Tesla. So even though their salary is going down, their their profitability goes up because they have so much so much invested in the company. So when you have all these people who are invested in the company, um, who have shares in the company, having a, a good corporate social responsibility increases the stock price. Now, if something happened like Volkswagen... Right where Volkswagen was doing this, uh, the shady stuff, the stock price dropped heavily, and whoever owned the stock lost. Right, so a lot of stakeholders lost, um, lost stakeholders and shareholders lost lost a lot of money because of what happened with Volkswagen. So, because of their negative corporate social responsibility, they lost money. So that's the, that's the correlation that we're seeing between CSR and profitability. CSR reporting. So I said, so basically, CSR reporting is a periodical report. Usually, it's annual, right? Every year, they report is a report published by companies to report their corporate social responsibility actions and results. So basically, it's just they just talk about what they've done and when what effect it's had on people or or the community or whatever they're they're working for. So basically, it's a um, document that's made. It's public information. Uh, regarding the, the company's contributions, their main intention is to improve the transparency appearance of business activities. It enables companies to measure the impact of their activities on the environment, society, and economy. Um, it allows them to externally communicate with their stakeholders what their goals regarding sustainable development and CSR. So basically, CSR reporting is a public document that is that shows that shows what the company is doing um, on a regular basis to make. Uh, the community and the people around them better to increase their corporate social responsibility, may how they're making the environment better. So basically, it, it outlines and details what they're doing and how it affected, how it affected uh, the people that they're that they're trying to or the things that they're trying to change. Okay, what's market regulation? A regulated market or controlled market is an idealized system where the government or other organizations oversee the market control of forces of supply and demand, and to some extent, regulate the market action. Self-regulations or emotional self-regulations. Regulations is the ability to respond to ongoing demands of experience with the range of emotions in a manner that is socially tolerable and sufficiently flexible to permit spontaneous reactions, as well as the ability to delay spontaneous reactions as needed. Okay, so self-regulations, how do you behave in, in society? Government regulations, obviously we know. Government regulations may need to restrict land and water use, a law that controls the way a government can operate. Okay. So what do all three regulations have in common? All forms of regulations work perfectly when they're all in sync. If one regulation doesn't meet the criteria, problems arise. Most times, government regulation is a foundation for all of the regulations. So as we know, um, government laws, they dictate the market and they dictate how people behave. Right, so we all, we start with the government. The government sets down the laws, like for example, this coronavirus pandemic. The government set the laws that everything's gonna be shut down. So now the markets got affected by it, right? The markets got affected by, um, uh, you know, some businesses did well, some businesses died, some businesses are, are struggling, right? So the markets got affected, and then also in turn ch changes the way people themselves behave, right? So now we're behaving differently. Because the government set out these laws, and now we have to all have to behave differently because of the government did. So it starts at the government, then the market, and the people. Okay, we're getting to week nine. 
owner, stakeholders, ethical responsibilities. So if you're a stakeholder and also an owner, what are your ethical responsibilities? So stakeholders who are also owners of the company to have a mindset and vision for the company that is ethical in manner and involves taking serious consideration of corporate social responsibilities. So seeing as they're also owners of the company, owners, stakeholders need to put ethics at the forefront of every decision. Otherwise, it will lead to scandals such as a Volkswagen scandal that tried to increase profits by scamming the entire world. So if you're an owner, you're also a stakeholder in the company. So what are your corporate social responsibilities? So if you're an owner, you kind of make the decisions of the com for the company, right? Like you have a lot of say in what happens with the company. So in terms of Volkswagen, what ended up happening was the, the the shareholders and the board of directors and stuff i guess what they did was they just they let they let it happen they let the scandal happen right as an owner stakeholder you cannot let that stuff you cannot take try to increase profits by by destroying the environment by destroying um your corporate social responsibility by hurt harming people's lives and stuff like that age that you, you have a responsibility to make sure that Whatever you're doing is done in an ethical manner and nobody's being harmed. Investor protection. So investor protection means that up to a certain limit, you receive your money back if the broker goes into bankruptcy or commits fraud. So basically investor protection. If you're an investor, how, how are you protected if you give a, a broker your money? Okay, so so basically you if a, if a broker or whoever's holding your money goes into bankruptcy or commits fraud, um, then that's where investor protection comes up, comes into play. Canadian Investor Protection Fund is a, Canada's way of ensuring clients of an insolvent broker receive their property held by the insolvent broker in time of insolvency. So, if you have a if you have uh, money or a property with a company and that company does fraud or goes bankrupt, basically investor protection helps you get all your, your all your stuff back. Corporate governance is a, is a system of rules, practices, and processes by which a firm is directed and controlled. Corporate governance essentially involves balancing the interests of a company's many stakeholders, such as shareholders, seniors, management, executives, customers, suppliers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so corporate governance is just a, it's a set of rules and practices by which a firm is directed and controlled. So it's just basically the rules and regulations that a company uses in order to go about their day-by-day -day activities. So what are your rights as a shareholder? If you're a shareholder, what are your rights? So every company has a hierarchical structure of rights. Okay, there's three main different uh, securities that company issues. There's bonds, preferred stock, and common stock. Okay, in other words, there's a pecking order of rights. So there's every every uh, shareholder has, there's a pecking, so there's an order of importance. So the priority of each security is best understood by looking at what happens when the company goes bankrupt. So if a company goes bankrupt, who gets paid first? So you might think as a common shareholder uh, that you're going to get paid first. But in reality, what happens is um, do, if, if a company goes bankrupt, the first people who are paid are the creditors. Whoever loaned money to the company, they get paid first. Um, second are bondholders. So when the company issues bonds, the bondholders get paid. Preferred stock, gets preferred shareholders get paid third. Um, and then common shareholders get paid. So people like us who own stock in the company, let's say you buy some stock off Quest Trade or um, TD or wherever you're, wherever you're buying the stock. If you buy that, you're the last person to get paid if the company goes bankrupt. So what are our rights, right? Majority of the people are common shareholders. What are their main rights? So it's good to know what you can do when you're a common shareholder. So you have voting power. Right, so if you own a if you own a um, a stock, a public stock, uh, usually what happens is if they're trying to make a decision, they'll send it out. They'll send you a a, a letter stating, you know, please vote on which on which uh, <coughs> which option to go with, which way, which direction we should go. So you have voting power. You obviously have ownership and portion of the company. You have the right to transfer the ownership, so you can sell it or transfer it over to somebody you want. Entitlement to dividends. So companies that pay dividends are companies. If you own a stock, they'll pay you part of the the earnings. Okay. So um, there's some people who pay 10 cents per dividend, right? So the dividend paying stocks are amazing. Opportunity to inspect corporate books or records, so you can look into the uh, company's uh, records or their books to see what's happening. You have the you have you know the full 
um, full authority to go and look at what's happening and then right to sue for wrongful acts. So if something, if the company does something, you can, you can sue them for, for a wrongful act, basically. All right, guys, that's the end of slides. Um, I will be seeing you guys in a live. See ya.